Hello guys, um, it's Alina. I'm going to do a quick tutor, uh, lead through on how to get number 4A. Once I show you how to do it, um, you guys will have no trouble doing the rest of the problem. Um, I want to apologize for the delay on this video. My phone was being very stupid during this time of recording. Um, and also, I want to give credit to Musab. This is not my concept. This was Musab's who helped me with this. Okay, so for part A, we are looking for f of g, g of x, which in a much more simpler term is equal, is another way of stating f of g of x, which um, is a much more understanding way of looking at it. Now, when going about this problem, you need to treat it just like the rest of our problems. The only difference that with this problem is that instead of getting a solid number like we used to, or you know something like 2x plus 1, we're getting coordinates, as you can see up here. We are essentially merging these coordinates given these instructions. Now, <clears throat> when doing this, um, you need to keep a be very open-minded, be ready for it, because the first time around this won't make sense. I'll try to do it as many times as possible for you to understand. Okay, so going in here, let's focus on 0, zero 3 right now. Um, in 0, 3, x, or 0 is the x value, and 3 is the y value. Hopefully you understand this. Um, when we're doing this one, we can plug in for g of x, since it asks for the x value, when we plug this in, it looks a little bit like, so when we use this, it looks a little bit like this, which I think is very understandable. Now, when we look, when whatever, I mean, there's no equation, they only give us points. So whatever, we know whatever we plug in for x, we will get y. So our y term here is three. So we can replace, since we know, so let me box this off the side. Since we know that these two are x and y values, we can with confidence say that g of 0 is equal to 3, which is our y value because we know whatever we plug into x is our y. Now, you can replace this the g value with 3, so f of 3. Now, at this point, <clears throat> we have to remember once we plug this in, this is not a y value anymore because this is our f of x, which we merely replace with g of x, which is what essentially what we're looking for. Now, when we fur back to the list and we look for an x value with three, we get a one, a very poorly drawn one, because we treat this like an x, so that is one. So from this, we can draw these coordinates. So from the bottom, I'm just gonna write it, I'm gonna write it on a separate sheet, why not? All the answers. So for up here, so our first coordinate since we plugged in 0 first, that is our x-coordinate. So that is 0, and at the end, we came out with 1. So that is our y. Now, let's do another part. Hold on. I'm doing this one-handed. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's do the next part, which is 1, 2. Let's focus on that now. Now, with 1, 2... It is the same process. Again, let's rewrite f of g of x just so you guys get another, ooh, that's a funky g, get another idea. So f of g of x, up here, our x value instead of 0 is 1. Hopefully, that makes sense. So we can rewrite this again as f of g of 1. Now, when we go back, we remember... As I said before, 1 is the x value, 2 
is the y value. Now, we can say again with confidence, same situation here, that g of 1 is equal to its y value, which is 2. So we can say with confidence and replace this g of 1 with 2, which will give us f of 2. Now, when we refer back to the f function and its coordinates, when we look for 2, hey, look, there's the 0. There is the y value that we need. And we can say 0. So when we write this out, our x value is 1. Again, this is a 1. And our y value is a 0. OK, let's do the next part. Do I have more paper? I should have more paper. OK, let's do the next part. All right, so let us now focus on 2, 2, 1. All right, 2, 1. So again, let's write this note, continuously write this notation so you do not get confused. At first, I was getting extremely confused, but I feel like this is a very easy notation to understand. f of g of x. Now, again, our x value is 2. So we rewrite this as f of g of 2. Again, if g2, this g2 can be rewritten as 1 due to the coordinate because whatever function of x is equal to y, which is our 1 value. So we can rewrite this whole thing to f of 1. Now again, since it is f of 1 this time, we treat the 1 as an x opposed to here as we treat it as a y. So when we refer back to f, we see a 1 here and our y value, which is 3. So we can rewrite this. Ooh, too many papers. We can rewrite this as, refer back, this is our x value, 2, 2, and this is our y value, 3. So let's wrap this up and do the last part of the problem, which is, ooh, hold on. <laughs> Got to draw a line. Um, Let's do our last part of the problem, which is 3, 0. Now, stay awake. All right. So, again, we write this notation. It may seem very tedious, but it'll keep you remembering why we are taking the steps we are. So, with this, f of g of x. Now, since we're focusing on 3, 0, we plug in f of g and this x value will be 3 this time. Now again, off the side, g3, remind yourself why you are plugging in these values and where the hell you're getting them from. So this g3, when we refer back, we can see, hey, this is our x value, ooh, x value, for this function. This function's x value is 3, but its function's y value is 0. So this will equal 0. So when we plug that back in, f of 0, we refer back to our original, uh, to the function 0. So we find 0 here. We got our 2 there. There's our y value. So again, look back. Again, this is an ordered pair. OK, where's our x value? That is 3. Beautiful 3 up there. Where's our y value? There's 2. Um, as far as I know, these are right. This, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This type of um, setup will work up for all your problems tonight on math homework. So please let me know if you have any more questions on the homework. Um, I'm more than willing to help out. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye.